The land of Atlantis. Did it exist, or was it a figment of Plato's imagination? Plato certainly mentioned it in his works, but it was recorded by Solon 200 years before Plato, and is shown in ancient records from Egypt which were thousands of years before both Plato and Solon. It's said that the Celtic lands were once part of Atlantis, as the lands were joined. Gallus is Spanish for Wales, and shares many things in common with the area of Galicia in the north of Spain, especially music, and even Scottish bagpipes. The landscape is also very comparable, with many similarities between flora and fauna, as well as the customs and language of the people. Ancient France was once known as Gaul. It seems too much evidence to be a coincidence. Plato described Atlantis as a naval empire that ruled the Western world and was advancing to attack what we now call Europe and Asia when it was struck down and sank. Many clairvoyants have claimed to have visited Atlantis and can channel energy from there. Some have had reincarnations there, which explains how they can describe what life was like there in great detail. It's said that many people alive today were once Atlanteans, who have chosen to reincarnate now in our present time. That would explain the great fascination that people hold with Atlantis, and why more and more people are awakening to Atlantean energy, as well as the energy of the Earth and Mother Nature in general. Nearly everyone alive today had a life on Atlantis, but most have forgotten. Plato also stated that Atlantis lay beyond the Pillars of Hercules, which would place it just beyond the entrance to the Mediterranean and the Straits of Gibraltar, between the southernmost tip of Europe and Morocco in Africa. By many accounts of psychics and clairvoyants, this appears to be true, by the energy and vibrations, and also by the natural light found in that area. The sinking wasn't a vastly rapid occurrence. It seems Atlantis sank in two parts. The first to sink was the western side, leaving only the tops of the highest mountains visible above sea level, which are the Caribbean islands as we know them today. The eastern side sank afterwards, leaving only the tops of the highest mountains above sea level, which are the Canary Islands, Madeira, and the Azores. The second sinking seems to coincide with the flooding of the Gibraltar Straits and the formation of the Mediterranean Sea. Prior to this event, much of the Mediterranean lay above sea level. Perhaps the many sandbanks that lie between the coast of Spain and the coast of Morocco can give further proof of this theory, as the area is known for being a paradise for fishermen. By all accounts, the land in Atlantis was very fertile and green with fruit, vegetables, trees and flowers growing in abundance. The gardens were huge with vineyards and glass houses for growing and there were huge wide open spaces like parks with seating areas. There were many birds of different species with various bird calls and songs giving off magical sounds. Everyone grew food Cows were kept for milk, and sheep were kept for wool, and the animals were stronger and larger. Men and women were equal, and everyone worked. Everyone had enough, and they lived longer. There was no begging, no starvation. Everyone had a home with a roof. Nobody was cold, nobody was alone. Most people were clairvoyant and they used the sixth sense and sometimes the seventh sense. They could sleep at will for long periods of time. They could use telepathy to communicate and they would move things with telekinesis. They mourned the passing of someone, but they also rejoiced knowing that the person had gone to a beautiful place, a place which they have the capacity to see and visit at times. People saw and communicated with spirit people and angels, and they had lots of knowledge about angels, as well as astrology. They knew far more about the stars than we do today. By all accounts, it appears that the Atlanteans were not dissimilar to humankind today, but they were far more advanced. 
They were tall people with beautiful, handsome features and mesmerising eyes. Seeing things was an important class in school for all children, as was God and the angels. They had to write down everything that the angels said and showed them. The life of a child was studied beforehand, so they knew old souls from new ones. Children walked after a few months and grew quickly, far quicker than the children of today. They had churches of white and gold that were used for studying. There was a separate small area for children, just like Sunday school today. There was incense, singing and sea water was considered holy water. White marble crosses were holy symbols. They had a great knowledge of how to use crystals and the earth's natural resources without causing harm, damage or depletion. The people travelled in airships, which allowed many of them to get away when the sinking began. The airships seemed to move on a force, not understood or seen to our naked eye, but it was the same force used to see the stars and to cure people if they had accidents. They used the force for singing and for dancing too, as they were very musical. They could also change the weather for the benefit of all. We don't have that force at the moment. Perhaps we're not ready to have it. Perhaps our hearts are not ready, since it appears the force is connected with love. The people were loving, very loving, but there were wicked ones too. Just like the world today, Atlantis had good people and bad people. The good Atlanteans walked in goodness, in Christ and in love. The rulers of the cities were rich, very rich. They had treasures and riches, but some did not share. They were greedy and their hearts were bad. They were clever, but wicked. They made weapons for fighting and killing, and they were violent. They wanted to conquer other lands with war and subject the people to slavery and keep them living in lack. Earthquakes and floods occurred and all the wicked ones sank into the sea, but the good ones escaped to places all over the earth to tell the history of Atlantis, of what they had seen and experienced. Atlantis was destroyed by wickedness. God allowed the wickedness to sink, just like with Noah's Ark. God sent Atlantis down, but saved the good ones to make a better world. Perhaps Atlantis will rise again when the time is right, when wickedness has been eliminated and when thoughts are pure and hearts are full of love. It's said that there are historical details about Atlantis buried under the Sphinx in Egypt, as well as evidence in ancient ruins in Mexico and Peru. It's thought that the architecture, sculptures and agriculture in those areas share much in common with Atlantis. For now, the huge cities of Atlantis are turned to stone under the water and under the stone is lava. Wisdom is what we think we know, but in reality, we know nothing. In today's world, some are ready for the wisdom of Atlantis, but most are not.